a lot of times we don't get to see these kids in a policing response. So we will deal with parents, we'll deal with housing issues, we'll deal with drugs and domestic violence. A lot of times when our officers respond, the kids will be asleep, they'll be in a back room, they'll be staying in the garage, they'll be at a friend's place. It's only when you start hearing names and understanding the connection between what we're dealing with and what we're seeing on a daily basis, just start putting a few of the pieces together. It just gives you a much broader perspective as to what's going on in your community. In response to St George High School reaching out for support, a panel of local stakeholders was established to work together on solutions for students and their families that were at high risk of disengagement. We've tried everything that we know or that we feel that we can do and we still hadn't had success. Looking at a holistic approach for helping these kids is the only way in a small community. I think, you know, um, if one wheel's flat or, or making a noise, you can fix that and the car's good, but if all the wheels are flat, you need to hit it from all different directions, you know what I mean? And you need to work together and there's no point fixing one, you've got to fix all of them. For us, it wasn't a matter of the school doing better, it was about a community doing better and working together to achieve that. The complex care panel in St George, when it first started up, I was a little bit sceptical. It uh, brings together a uh, group of government and non-government workers, including the police. It's a very uh, intense process where you're talking about one or two or three individuals on a monthly meeting. And so we would case manage our students at a local level uh, and then any students that we felt we were really um, at our wits end, we didn't know what else to try, we would then refer those students to the complex care panel. Previously, some of our students had already engaged with some of the organisations that were part of our panel, but there wasn't that sharing of information between the agencies, feeding back to the school, feeding back to the police, feeding back to our NGO. So I think that that was really critical. Each time the group meets, they agree on a course of action for each young person and allocate tasks. They nominate a lead agency, usually the one with the strongest relationship with the young person, to be a single point of contact for the young person and their family. They review each case periodically and adjust their actions when they need to. We all had panel members basically sign a declaration of confidentiality that whatever was discussed within our complex care panel stayed within the complex care panel, but also knowing that we did need to be open and honest with each other because only when we did share information can we really get to the core of an issue. Having that ability to input into these discussions, contextualise some of the issues that are going on in a family dynamic, really allows the other NGOs and also the school to be aware of what some of the things are at play. A complex care panel isn't a magic wand, it's not the solution to all of the problems, but I think what it does do is for the few individuals that are involved in this process, they themselves have a benefit and improved outcomes. I do think for us it was about um, solutions focused, but with those solutions they had an action component. So there was something that somebody was responsible for. What I did find throughout that process is that if you really take the time to actually invest in these kids, you can see some positive outcomes. Some of our students we were able to engage with um, certificates and, and training, so they weren't necessarily coming back to school, but we still felt there was a focus there on education and training. So even though that wasn't provided within a school context, you know, that was still success. Probably the biggest part was the relationships that I was able to build with the other service providers in town. The networking part of it, like coming together and um, meeting all the other service providers and seeing what they do and then discussing the same client was really, really helpful because everyone's got a different approach, everyone's got different skills. Being able to link in with NGOs and also through the school, identify where service provisions are available, made our job a hell of a lot easier. There's the opportunity to make sure that we're not doubling up on, on um, support groups and perhaps one support group is working within that fam with a family or with a student and they've got to the point where they think, no, we can't offer anything else, you know, then there's the opportunity for another organisation or support group to step in. What we're looking at doing with these young people is really trying to change their trajectory. If um, we can identify that they're on a path that ultimately will lead to uh, some negative outcomes. We're realistic about what we can achieve and it's really just about adjusting that trajectory so that we can try and get them a better pathway to success. I think it's, you know, all about these kids and that, that should always be our focus is what's the best interest for the young person.